Get sunlight in your eyes in the morning, especially on cloudy days, as many days of your life as you can. Yep. And make it a pleasurable thing. Yeah. Right? Just get up and get outside. Get out on a porch. Get outside. You know, take sunglasses. Just do it. Right? Um, uh, most days, if not every day. Try and get your sleep right. Now, younger people with different schedules, like, don't give up a social life. But, you know, try and get a good amount of sleep. Get good at that. Some people are great sleepers. Some people aren't. Very good idea if you want to be healthy to do three days a week of weight training, we're talking about 10 minutes of warm up and 50 to 60 minutes of working out. If you want, we have a, a schedule like of a, that encompasses all this. That's on hubermanlab.com. You get it free. There's nothing to sell here. It's just like a fitness toolkit that we have a sleep toolkit, all that zero cost. Oh, wow. You just download as a PDF, three pagers. So you Amazing. don't have to listen to me talk. Yeah. Then I would say three days a week of resistance training and train your legs, guys. Come on, hmm. you know, like have, like, come on, um, <laughs> and yeah, and uh, <laughs> and three days a week of some cardiovascular work. People might say, well, listen, I'm in my 20s or 30s. Like, I'm not worried about it. It's not about being worried about a heart attack. It's about maintaining blood flow to everything. What is some cardiovascular work? Okay, so I think one day a week, you take a long, slow jog or pedal on the bike or treadmill or swim, whatever your favorite thing is. If you want to make it social and you're out with somebody, you could literally get one, like wear a weight vest for a hike if you want to make it harder. But um, you could skip rope, whatever. The other cardio day, sprint. It's real easy, find a patch of land, sprint for 30 seconds to 45 seconds, then walk back for a minute to 90 seconds, sprint again, do that five to 10 times. Till, by, by the end, you will have increased your speed, your VO2 max, your output. And then another day, make, do something fun, like take, I got a friend, he's a musician, I won't name his name, he's well-known musician, he's, he's like really into Pilates right now, probably for a bunch of reasons. <laughs> um, loves Pilates, he's like, yo, I'm loving Pilates, and he's Pilates. <laughs> Some other cardiovascular thing that's kind of fun. Could be basketball, yeah. could be skateboarding, like something that you enjoy at least three days a week. And the other day is weight training. It's not complicated. And then one day a week, just take off as a recovery day. And to, the way to organize this so that your legs recover in time for the sprint day and your sprints are kind of double as a uh, leg day. We have an episode on this called Toolkit for Fitness. You don't have to watch it. We'll just have our fitness toolkit lays out the schedule, exercise selection, rest sets, all that. Mm -hmm. Super easy, it's minimal time commitment. And listen, there are reasons to do it for aesthetic reasons. There are reasons to do it for heart health reasons. This is key. Okay, so sunlight, that. I think have some tool to be able to control your stress. Some people are super mellow, but some non-pharmaceutical tool. The double inhale through the nose, the physiological size. So big, deep inhale through the nose, then sneak in a little bit more air, then dump all your air with your mouth. That's the fastest way to calm down. Listen, I also think it's a really good idea in addition to seeking good social connection, et cetera. I think it's good to have some practice that makes you more resilient. And I'm a big fan of cold showers and ice baths and cold. They have great banyas here in New York. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, put yourself into uncomfortable cold three or five days a week. It's not about the metabolism increase as much as is the mental training of doing something that sucks. I mean, David Goggins has this right. And actually this brings us back to this, the, the, the importance of story. I mean, David is a guy who just keeps pushing himself and pushing himself to do the hard thing. But I think the reason he's so effective as a communicator is because we understand that he had to go through a journey that was incredible from being this 300 plus pound guy to that and he's still doing it. So we're like in his story, he's mm. still going. And so I think all of us would do well to, yeah, to push ourselves to be uncomfortable. And then in the cold, what's beautiful is after you get out of the cold, and I like to end on warm shower, you do a minute or three minutes of a cold or get in the ice bath or whatever it is, you get this huge long lasting surge in dopamine that sets your mood and your positivity for hours and hours. This has been shown by data. Wow. And so I think it's a wonderful tool and it's, listen, these are basically zero cost tools. They take time. Yeah. I wish I had developed these tools in my twenties. Yeah. I built them gradually. I've been working out a long time and little things here and there, but if you start them early, yeah. they stay with you. And I always think the best way to outperform everybody in your business, or at least keep up in very competitive business, and Joe Rogan is a beautiful example of this, is to take excellent care of your health. Hmm. Yeah. He's, I mean, think about three or four, four hour podcasts a week, yeah. plus the comedy thing, but it's, an, it's superhuman, yeah. plus UFC. You're doing this, like people who are really good at their craft, yeah. invest in taking really good care of themselves. Yeah. And then of course that includes avoid toxic relationships. Mm -hmm. Just avoid them. They ruin people's lives. They'll ruin your life. Like just do your best to be in healthy relationships and then everything's good. And I don't say that lightly, like that's a big one. Mm -hmm. I've seen so many, 
people who were doing great, but because they got caught up in some drama, they just nosedived the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So.